In our previous lecture, we learned how to obtain initial requirements and establish an information repository for our needs, making it easier for us to effectively organize project information. In this lecture, we will focus on how to efficiently analyze requirements and conduct preliminary research. Now, we have the requirements for a character, but merely relying on text makes it challenging to establish a solid understanding of this character because text conveys limited information. Therefore, in this lecture, our primary goal is to create a relatively visual board for her, making it easier for us to quickly build a basic image of our character. Before we begin, I'd like to recommend a very useful tool for creating role boards. Please search for this keyword and visit the website to download and install it. This is a completely free software, and whether to make a payment is entirely voluntary. If you wish to use it for free, upon entering the download page, select Custom in the Select Amount option and enter zero. However, I do encourage you to consider supporting the software authors as they have provided such a fantastic tool. Once you have completed the installation, double-clicking to open the software will reveal its initial interface, which looks like this. You can hold the right mouse button to move the entire window and click outside the window to hide it. Right click within the window to adjust its mode. We will be using this tool shortly. Back to our character database. The clothing of a character is a crucial aspect of their identity. Imagine seeing a stranger from afar and in a situation where you cannot discern their facial features. The first thing you notice is their attire. Therefore, we need to investigate the clothing of the character. Let's start by taking a look at what Mythical Feather Cloak really looks like. To access this page, perform a keyword search. You can see there are many related clothing here. Choose an image that includes a frontal view of the clothing. Next, click and hold the left mouse button to drag the image into the software window, thereby successfully collecting the image. You can use the mouse scroll wheel to zoom in and out on the canvas and click and hold the mouse scroll wheel to move the canvas. The next item to consider is the character's accessories. Follow the same steps. Copy and search for the keyword. The search results will display related accessories. Again, select an image with a frontal view, drag it into the canvas. The next item is fitted leather tunic. Let's see if there are any search results that match our expectations. If not, you may need to adjust the keywords. Because Stable Diffusion is an AI model trained on a large number of publicly available online images, if you cannot find relevant images of a particular item online, there is a high likelihood that Stable Diffusion may not recognize that item either making it difficult to generate the expected image. As before, select an image with a frontal view and drag it into the canvas. Now, let's search for the next piece of clothing. You might find these steps somewhat redundant and think that you could simply input these keywords directly into the prompt, expecting AI to provide a satisfactory result. However, in reality, current AI still has significant limitations. Without any manual intervention, the results it generates are entirely uncontrollable and might only consist of visually pleasing images that do not align with the original requirements. For instance, 
In the case of shadow beast leather boots, you can see that there's an issue with this phrase. The problem lies in the term shadow, which AI is unlikely to understand in abstract contexts. Let's remove shadow and try again. The results now appear more aligned with our expectations. Adding woman makes it easier to get the desired results. If you don't find a frontal view, you can input front view. Select one of these and you'll find many similar images. Once you find a satisfactory one, drag it onto the canvas. Next up is Pendant. As usual, find a satisfactory image and drag it onto the canvas. After completing the investigation of clothing features, let's take a look at environmental features, such as shadows and twilight. However, we can see that the search results do not match the requirements at all. This is one of the reasons why many users of Stable Diffusion sometimes find that their prompts do not work as expected. Of course, if you're not familiar with what a prompt is, don't worry, as it will be covered in later lectures. When encountering such situations, it's often a good idea to try different phrasing or consult with the client to see if adjustments are possible. In this case, I will simply remove it. Now, let's take a look at Moonlit Forest. it seems like the results align very well with our expectations. A forest with a mysterious touch under moonlight. Seeing so many similar results, you should now have an idea that stable diffusion should be good at generating these types of images. As before, collect those that meet your expectations. Next up is alleyways, which can be a point of confusion. Looking at the results, it's clear that this word is somewhat misleading in the context of our character's information because it doesn't specify the historical era. Our character seems to be associated with a medieval or even earlier period in most people's impressions. Therefore, we should add keywords like medieval or ancient to refine the results. This way, the results will align better with our expectations. Select a few scenes that you find suitable and collect them onto the canvas. Let's take a look at the last environmental keyword. Based on the search results, it's evident that AI might not fully grasp this term due to a lack of relevant training data. Therefore, we can make appropriate rephrasing based on the meaning of this text. For example, we can simplify it to magic, which is concise and easy to understand. All right, we've collected the preliminary materials and now let's go back to the canvas to see if we've managed to create a visual image of the character. Imagine our character standing in a moonlit forest. Of course, the character's role is also crucial.
Let's find out what a shadow mage is. and select a suitable image to add to the canvas. I want to reiterate once again that this course teaches a methodology, not just the use of tools. Simply knowing the tools from a purely technical perspective is not the best path to learning AI art because it fundamentally involves artistic creation. What I aim to convey is the thought process and research methods when engaging in artistic design. By mastering this methodology, you can attempt to create any character, not just the one we're currently working on. That's where the real value of this course lies compared to scattered guides and tutorials. Finally, let's save the current canvas for future use. I'll use the character's name as the file name. This way, we have our character canvas saved. You can create a new blank canvas and then right click to select Load, where you can find and load the canvas you saved earlier. I didn't fast forward this video because I wanted to show you the process of conducting preliminary research for a project. You might be looking for a so called one click method but the reality is that such a method doesn't currently exist. Even if it did, the results produced by a method that requires no effort or investment would likely lack substantive value. Often, in art or design, the value lies in the process rather than just the end result. You might be wondering why we haven't discussed how to install Stable Diffusion yet, considering this is a Stable Diffusion course. For a simple installation guide, you can refer to my previous course, where the lecture on installing Stable Diffusion can be accessed directly from the course preview without purchasing the full course. As I mentioned, it's just a tool for designers and artists. The primary focus of our learning here is how to use it effectively. The learning process doesn't need to follow a module-by-module -module approach like reading a software manual. Instead, it should be based on your actual needs. In art and design, your mindset is crucial. You can't expect to become an artist or designer by memorizing a tool manual from cover to cover. Okay, go ahead and create a visual board for your own character. Before starting the next lecture, go visit this page to learn how to install Stable Diffusion, and I'll see you in the next lecture.